Well, we're checking back in with Thomas Crane Public Library Director Megan Allen to get an update on how the library is uh, coping during this pandemic and about a brand new library to go service. Hey, Megan, nice to see you again. Great to see you too. Who would ever would have thought that we'd still be uh, doing these virtual interviews three months later? <laughs> I know, it's pretty crazy, but um, here we are. Here we are, we're making do. So how is, uh, how's the library been, been doing over these past few months? Well, um, from mid-March to mid-June, we basically have had no staff in the building. So all the services we've provided have been online and virtual and staff have been working from home. Um, so that, that's been a challenge, but we've been learning as we go. I, um, I just heard an expression that I'd never heard before, uh, building the plane while flying it. Have you ever heard that? I have not, but it, that's a great way to describe it. It really is. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel like what we've been doing for, for the three months we were closed, just like figuring out how to provide programming online, doing it with staff at home without necessarily the best equipment. Just like everything's been a scramble, figuring out how to take phone calls um, and to be able to help people live with staff working from home. So we have been figuring it out. Um, and um, and now we've had staff phasing back into the building since the middle of June, um, and we've had uh, heaps and heaps of return from the book drops, which we've had open the whole time uh, to deal with. So we've had a backlog to deal with, um, and uh, setting things up so staff can work safely in the building. Safety is first. So trying to have staff working far apart from each other and um, following all of our new health and safety protocols and getting ready to provide pickup service. So that's, you know, it's a, it's a completely new way to provide service for us. So we had to sort of think through all the steps and how we would provide it in a way that would also keep our patrons safe as they come and pick things up. And we know there are a lot of people out there really anxious to come in and start getting library books and DVDs and music and so we are now providing that service. That's just great. Have you been able to kind of judge how the uh, the online programming has been going? Have you been getting any feedback about that? It's been going very well. Um, we've been getting actually uh, often larger audiences than we used to get in the building probably because you know now you don't have to you know, come and travel to the building to um, to attend a program. So, yeah, I think it's been quite successful. And we will continue to provide that kind of programming for the indefinite future. And, you know, we're thinking that even once we are starting to provide some in-person programming in the building, we're going to be looking for ways to live stream those programs so that, you know, they continue to be accessible to people who are still at home. Yeah, and it looks like um, it's going to be at least over uh, the summertime, probably, um, if not if not into the fall as well. Yeah, our, our summer reading program is all online. Um, we just kicked that off yesterday on July 1st, and we have a whole summer of online fun planned for kids. Any uh, thoughts of having online, um, uh, like concerts that are so popular, you know, or the summer concerts on the lawn or any kind of entertainment online like that? We've um, talked about it. it. Online concerts are a lot more challenging in terms of getting good sound quality yeah. for a concert that's, you know, um, so I'm not sure, you know, if or when we'll try to tackle that. Okay. Yeah, one step at a time. Uh, but what you are doing is um, having contactless curbside pickup service. What's going on? Yes. Um, right now, um, we can provide access to the Thomas Crane Library collections. Um, interlibrary loan and delivery among libraries on South Shore hasn't started up yet. Uh, but we have plenty of stuff at the library. Um, so the way it works is um, you can place a hold just the way you always used to in the catalog. 
we have an online form that's up on our website now that you can use if you don't want to just look and place a hold. So you use the form to tell us what kinds of things you're looking for. So, you know, maybe you're a romance fan or a history fan and you don't have specific titles in mind, but, you know, you'd like the librarians to select things for you, you can use the form. Um, you can also just pick up the phone and call us and um, someone will help you figure out what you're looking for. Um, once your items are ready for pickup, you receive a notification and you schedule an appointment to come pick it up. Uh, we're doing it by appointment just so that we can keep people spread out over the day and, um, you know, tr avoid having long lines and people getting close to each other. So that's really for everybody's safety and convenience. And then once you have your appointment, you just come to the main library and um, the pickup is at our Washington Street entrance, which is the one that's close to the parking lot. And it's pretty, pretty simple and easy. We think, yeah. we hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th again, this is just the main branch right now. This is happening, right? Right. Okay. And are there uh, designated hours for, for pickup? Starting July 6th, um, we will have pickup available between 10 and 8, so 10 a.m. and 8 p.m., Monday through Thursday. On, and then on Fridays and Saturdays, it will be 10 to 4. Okay. And is there a limit to the amount of items that can be requested for pickup? We are limiting right now to 10 adult or teen items and 20 um, children's items at, for a single pickup and asking people to just have one pickup per week. That's just because, you know, there's only so many hours in a day and days in a week and we're trying to give as much opportunity for as many people to come in and, and pick things up. Okay. And uh, I'm assuming um, all the guidelines with wearing a face mask and social distancing and things of that nature are, are in place? Yes, and we have signage at the library, so when you come the first time to pick things up, you'll be able, you'll see what to do. We have some signage to help people stay six feet apart as they, you know, if they have to stand in line. And then we have a table outside the doors on Washington Street, and the, the items are all ready for you. And then when you get there, um, there's a phone number to call. Um, when you get there, you'll see the phone number and the staff will bring your items out, put them on the table, and then you can just pick them up and, and go. Okay. They're all checked out to you. So, uh, so folks should bring their phones with them um, so they can call once they get they have, Yes. And, you know, their library card too. Okay. Um, so even though we've checked them out ahead of time, when you get there, you call and you just give us your, your name and your library card number so that we know we're bringing out the right stuff for the right person. Right. And, um, yeah, if you don't have a phone, that's fine too. You know, you can just, um, hold up your library card and, uh, staff can see who you are and, and bring out your stuff. Okay. Um, and have the materials been sanitized some way, Megan, or, you know, how are you kind of ensuring that there's, that things are safe? Well, you know, we have like many, many thousands of items coming and going and we, we, we're not individually cleaning or disinfecting library items. We are um, holding all returned items, anything coming into the building through book drops or through delivery when that resumes will be set aside for three days. So we're basically quarantining them for 72 hours before staff check them in and handle them. Okay. Um, and staff are following the guidelines from the health department about wearing masks and hand sanitizing, frequent hand washing. Um, so we're, we're following all those measures. Um, if people are concerned, you know, I know some people are basically doing the same thing with grocery store items or, you know, when they, bring them home, they sort of set them aside for two or three days. And people can certainly do that with their library items as well if they're concerned. 
Okay. And if folks want to return items, how does that work? Uh, our book drops are open at all of our locations, and they have been the whole time we're closed. So uh, anybody can return things anytime. Anything that was checked out before we closed um, in March, the due date has been extended to July 31st. So there's no hurry to bring things back. Um, but people are welcome to bring them back whenever they want and just leave return them in any of the drops at any of the locations. Um, if you're coming in to pick up new items uh, as part of our outside pickup service, you might want to bring back your old items while you're coming. Um, you'll be standing right next to the book drops at the main library, so it'll be easy enough to put your stuff in. We also have added a, um, a second outside drop at the main library just for CDs and DVDs and other media items because yeah. we used to ask patrons not to put those in the main book drop because then when the books get returned, fall on top of them and can cause damage. So we've added an outside drop just for that um, material so people can feel free to bring that stuff back as well. Okay. Is that at the same location? Yeah, it's at the main library. It's right across from the regular drop. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, very good. Now, I know that um, for folks who uh, don't have a library card, can they get an, a virtual card right now? Yes, you can sign up for an e-card online. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we are, we, a lot of people have signed up for e-cards over the last three months, and that gives you access to all um, online materials. Uh, it does not uh, give you access to physical materials like print books and stuff. Okay. Um, we're 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 going to add the option to get a physical card. We just um, haven't gotten there yet, but I hope in the next week or two there will be a way if you want to convert your e-card to a physical card and borrow you know print materials and CDs, you'll be able to do that, or just sign up for a new card. Um, we just have to work out the logistics of getting an actual physical card to people and right. verifying identity. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, and am I correct in assuming that, so the fines are suspended till the end of July? Well, anything that's, that was checked out before June 22nd is not due until July 31st. Okay. Um, we started offering our outside pickup service um, a few days ago uh by contacting people who have had items waiting here for them since the middle of june yep. so we figured we'd like get those into people's hands first so you know some items have been checked out since june 22nd mm -hmm. those will have the regular due dates um and options to renew um but there still won't be any fines due because the board of trustees voted uh in may to eliminate overdue fines for adult items starting July 1st. So, and as you may remember, we eliminated the fines on children's and teen materials uh, two years ago. So we just added adult items into the mix. Great. So I know this, everything we're talking about is up on the main website. Uh, maybe we could show folks what that looks like or so they get a sense. Sure. Yeah. Um, here's our homepage as it looks today which is july 1st so it might look a little bit different by the time people are watching this okay. um we have been um providing updates right in the middle of the page under library news uh so that people can see changes in our services as we go through this um pandemic period um we still have our t new tcpl at home page and our tcpl at Home for Kids pages, which you and I talked about the last time, right. um, which have all kinds of links to online services and programs and materials. Um, and now we also have this link to TCPL to go, which is right there. And probably by the time this interview uh, starts to air, we'll have uh, a logo here. And so it'll be a little bit more prominent um, so if you click on TCPL to go, you will get to our page that is just about our outside pickup service, mm -hmm. and it gives you the 
four easy steps of requesting material, receiving the notification, scheduling your pickup time, and then coming to the main library to pick up your items. We've tried to keep it as simple and easy as we could. Um, and right at the top, it says what the pickup hours are. Uh, as of today, we're only offering, offering it Monday to Friday, 10 to 4, but starting July 6th, the hours are going to be expanded. So just so people will have more opportunities to come in and, and pick things up. Yeah, that's great. And I think it's so key too that you do have, um, you know, live help available on the, on the phone for folks uh, who might not have uh, internet access. Yes, we do. Our live help desk is still operating on our, the schedule that we set up when we were closed. That's also going to expand starting next week. So our help desk hours will be, actually, if you look at this page, you can see over at the left in that little box with the photo of the main library on the top, it has our help desk number and our help desk hours, which are currently um, 10 to 12 and 5 to 7, and then Fridays 10 to 12 and 2 to 4, starting on July 6th. Those hours are going to expand too, so we'll have people here from 10 to 7 from Monday through Thursday, um, 10 to 4 without a break on Friday, and then 10 to 1 on Saturdays. Super. So we will have um, people on the help desk available to help people. We, we find a lot of people need assistance with digital mm -hmm. um, collections and services and figuring out how to get things on their device. Um, so we will have staff available to help walk people through that. Um, we also have our, um, our to go service has, um, phone hours and that you can see that right in the middle under request materials. Number one, yep. that's, uh, our main number extension to Monday to Friday, nine to five, those hours will extend to next week. Um, so that it'll be more like our old hours. Mm -hmm. So if you want to request an item or you want to find out about the to-go service, you want to find out how to um, make your pickup appointment, we have an online tool for people to do that with. But if you have trouble using it or you you just want to call and make the appointment, we'll do it for you. And so that's the number to call for that. I think it's important to point out that um, it's it's you shouldn't just come to the library after you've placed your order. You need to have a scheduled pickup time, right? Yes, and we have had some people confused about that. Yeah. Yes, you need to. You'll get a notice in the mail in the, in your email or your or a text, depending on what you how you have your library account set up. Or if you don't have an email, you'll get a phone call that says your hold is ready. Great. But yes, you can't just come right in and get it. You need to make an appointment to get it. Okay. And I love that you've put the, uh, the crane into flight for, for, your, for your logo. That's, I've never seen that before. That's great. Well, that's our very talented uh, graphic artist who's also one of our librarians, Paul. So he designs all our logos. Super. Yeah, that's great. And I know a lot of your um, staff have made their own uh, recommendations and picks for, for summer reading and, and, uh, and things like that. So folks can, um, you know, get a sense for what, what would be interesting or popular. Yes, I, that's a good point because a lot of people like to just come in the library and browse for things, you know, see what's new. I like to do that too. Uh, you know, I always find things and I, I love to look at staff picks because I might discover something new. So um, we know it's harder to do that when you can't browse the physical collection. So we do encourage people. We have lots of recommendations. Uh, if you look right under where it's the big Thomas Crane Public Library banner where it says books, music and movies, mm -hmm. we have lots of recommendations under each of those sections for people and under books especially um if you look under good reads for example we have lots of recommendations um and we also have um new books up under what's new 
so you can see what's just arrived. And I want people to know that we have new books. We, our staff was selecting and ordering items all the time we were closed, books, DVDs, and CDs. Um, and we didn't have things delivered. That was the other thing that we were catching up on when staff got back into the building. About a week before we came back, we had literally a ton of new items delivered to the library, filled up the community meeting room with boxes. Wow. So our staff have been unpacking them and getting them ready for people to borrow. So um, if you want to just you know, browse and see what's new, you can look through uh, all of these different lists. And so you just pretend you're browsing our regular shelves, but you're, you can see the covers and um, you can click right through into the library catalog and place a hold. So okay. it's easy to do. And um, so we have lots of stuff. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, when eventually folks are able to come back, it's going to be like a, a whole new library to them. <laughs> have all this new material that hasn't been touched. We also, our children's librarians have been putting together little book bundles on popular children's themes, um, of picture books. So oh. those are available. And they've also been putting together little um, do-it-yourself craft kits that they'll be providing to families when families come to pick up books for their kids. So uh, people, parents will remember that usually every summer we have craft art to go craft projects at all of our branches all summer. Mm -hmm. So this is our version of art to go, but it really is to go. Oh, you okay. just pick up the kit and take it home and your kids can do the craft at home. Oh, very good. Yeah, I know um, Amanda Pegweed up at the Wollaston branch always has a, a neat science program for the kids. Yes. Yes, and we're still doing those online, too. Super. That's great. Any sense, Megan, as to when the physical buildings will actually be open again? Well, um, there are a lot of challenges around that yeah. uh, related to just keeping everybody safe. We're, we're very eager to provide more services to people and provide some kind of access to public computers, um, scanning services, things like that. Um, we're waiting to see uh, what phase three allows for libraries. Right. We've basically been following the 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 reopening Massachusetts phases as the governor has been rolling them out. Generally, he will roll out um, specific details on the next phase or part of the phase because the phase two was rolled out in a part one and a part two. I don't know if there's going to be part three or we're going to go to phase three. Right. Um, but usually those industry specific guidelines don't come out till like a couple of days before the phase starts. So it doesn't give you a lot of time to plan, um, which I understand. We're all making this up as we go along. Right. Yes, um, okay. So the we're waiting. Flying, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So we're, we're, you know, we'll be watching for those and the Massachusetts board of library commissioners, which is the state library agency. Uh, has been issuing library specific um, guidelines and recommendations for each phase. Mm -hmm. So as those come out, we review those. And um, so as soon as we're able to safely provide some additional services, we will. Um, there's obviously a lot of conversation among library directors statewide about how to provide services in this environment safely. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, and, you know, people are talking about allowing, you know, f many fewer people into the building for specific purposes. For example, you know, 30 minutes to browse and pick out books and then you got to go and let somebody else in. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there are many approaches being discussed. So um, when we get there, we'll, 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 be looking at that as well and you know obviously every community is a little bit different right. and every library 
physical facility is a little bit different too, um, you know, so that will all influence what services we provide and how we do it. Sure. Um, we're certainly eager to provide more services to people as soon as we can do it safely. Sure. Yeah. How is the, uh, curious, how is the, the Quincy COVID Memories Project uh, going, the collection of, uh, of folks' experiences during this time? I think it's going very well. Um, there have been quite a few submissions, um, a fair number of little short videos and photos, I think. Yep. Um, and so I, I encourage people to continue to submit items. It's, it's a really fun project, I think. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, we're happy to team up with you um, here at QATV along with the city and, and Quincy 400. It's um, quincyculturalmemory.com is the website um, to go to. Yes. Excellent. Great to talk to you, Megan. Thank you so much. Anything else we should share, do you think? Yes, actually. Um, <laughs> I, um, I spent a good chunk of yesterday touring the North Quincy Branch renovation project. Oh, with yeah. Paul Hines, who's the Commissioner of Public Buildings. Uh, I've, been, I've been in there a few times during the closing, but not as much as I, I, I would have wanted to be. Um, so I could give a little bit of an update on that. There have been multiple delays in that renovation project, not surprisingly. Um, many of them related to the, you know, the pandemic and uh, difficulty getting certain things like windows. Um, but the project is moving along and um, it's turned into quite a major renovation. Really? Um, yes. So the interior is pretty much a shell at this point, uh, but they're almost done rebuilding the new ceiling and a lot of the electrical is, is in um, and the project is moving forward. We're, we're now looking at a fall reopening wow. date. Okay. We'd originally thought it would be in the spring, but you know, when everything happened in March, just the whole timeline got delayed. Right. Okay. So that it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, we have been taking photos periodically along the way and posting them on our Flickr page. So people who are interested should go to our website, find our Flickr link at the bottom of the page, and you can go in and uh, look at the pictures. So neat. Um, we'll continue to take take photos and put them there. Okay. And the other thing that happened while we were close, it was sort of unexpected, was a lot of work has been happening at the Adam Shore branch oh. as well. So there were a few small things that, that were going to be done to the branch, uh, but um, the public buildings department took advantage of our period of being closed to really go in there and address, address a number of issues, including some handicapped accessibility issues. So when the building reopens, we'll have a um, fully accessible public bathroom, among other things. Um, new lighting fixtures, new ceiling in some areas, some new flooring and uh, carpeting, um, plus the brand new HVAC system will be fully operational and there will be air conditioning in there. Woohoo! For the first time in like 10 years or something. Wow, um, okay. Yeah. So, we are talking about providing the outside pickup service at location at branch locations, mm -hmm. not just at the main library, but right now, neither North Quincy or Adam Shore are, are ready for staff to be working in the building. So, okay. um, you know, we might look at providing some pickup service at Wollaston at some point, but mm -hmm. we, we kind of want to see how it goes and how busy we are at the main library. And if we hit capacity there and we just can't meet the need, we will look at providing um, pickup service at, at branch libraries. Okay, very good. And um, the bookstore, Megan, at the main branch, is that, that remains closed, is that right? That remains closed, and I, I there's no reopen date for that. Um, we're at this point, we have only staff in the building, um, no volunteers. And of course, the bookstore is run by friends of the library volunteers who right. are um, 
they put a lot of time and effort into the bookstore and they're of course eager to get that up and running again because it's a source of revenue for their friends mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. they use to support all of our programming which is still going on mm -hmm. um uh but for their safety uh it's it's not we're not ready yet to have folks come in and start working in there of course yeah are you uh, are you taking uh, donations though outside uh, no we can't handle donations at all right now okay. we have our hands full with you know the services we're trying to provide yeah sure so people should just hold on to that stuff and yeah. the day will come when we'll we'll welcome donations again okay great anything else I think that's all. I'll probably think of something else after we say goodbye. But. <laughs> so, but the big news is uh, you're beginning contactless curbside pickup um, at the main branch. Yes. Um, yes. Library.org is the place to go uh, or give a call. Yes, we are looking forward to seeing you. Uh, we have missed seeing our patrons. Yeah. And even if we're just waving at you through the window, we'll be happy to see you. So yeah. come back. That's great. Thanks. Good to see you, Megan. Hopefully, you know, you and I can do this in person again next time. Yes. Yeah, that would be great. All right. Take care and, uh, and be well. Okay. You too. Thanks, Thanks. Joe. You're welcome. Bye-bye.